Hello, I'm Matt from Freeform Fabrication, product specialist here, and today I'm going to talk to you about hatching items on the EasyCAD software for your laser engravers. So there's a few things to look at first. If you draw a shape or a text or something like that, um, if you just have it like this, so currently it's just an outline, um, and if you just press mark on something like this, all you will get is an actual outline. The, re the way to get deep engraving is to do something called hatch, and it's this H on the top menu up here. So this opens the hatch menu. Um, I'm going to talk to you only about the ones that you actually need to use rather than sort of going through all of the settings. So hatch one is how you do your actual deep engraving. Hatch two is where you do the cleaning. So um, we always want both enabled and it will then automatically do the cleaning on ev every single one. So the first thing to notice is some of these menus here. Um, so the first one to notice is the pen number. The pen number matches the metal that you're working on. So if you see on the right hand side here, you've got the platinum, yellow gold, white gold, red gold, silver, brass, steel. Um, so I do all of my testing on brass, it's a nice metal to work with when doing tests and it's quite cheap as well, which is always helpful. So I've got the brass setting clicked there. Um, then I will show you what a hatch actually does. So if you see on here right now, after I've hatched it becomes this blue box. If I zoom in on that box you can see all of these lines here. So that is what the laser will follow to actually do the deep engraving. Now, obviously we can see those lines there, but because if you look at our hatch menu again, because the space, the lines, um, the space between those lines is 0 0.02 mil, when we actually come to look at the engraving afterwards, you won't be able to see that at all. Um, so I would say most of the time um, on jewelry related items anyway you i wouldn't go above 0.02 um, there's, there's no need to you want to make sure that detail is really in that design so the next step you can see on there is as, as we looked at that before is cross hatch so the cross hatch is basically it will go one way with one pass and then go another way with another pass. Again, just as a way to make sure that there's none of those lines um, in your engraving when you're finished. Um, the next setting to, to notice here on hatch one, we're still just talking about hatch one at the moment, is the count. That is essentially what is your depth. So where where something's highly polished already and you're just adding the engraving to it, you can probably do less counts. Where, say if you're engraving on a casting, is where you want to do more counts. So I would say to do a minimum of five. Um, and then what you can do is if you don't move the item out of the, out of the clamp or out of the rotary device, you can then just feel and look at the engraving and then just add more. So start with less counts and then keep adding more as you go. Um, I would say do a minimum of five it is a good one to do. On hatch two, first thing you'll notice is number 11. That's the cleaning pen. Um, that doesn't change. doesn't matter what metal you're working on. The cleaning one is always 11. Um, generally, you don't need to do more than one pass. You can do two if you like. Um, it will make it slightly cleaner. But if you're going to polish that anyway, um, th there's, not, there's no need to. But... It doesn't take long. The cleaning cycle is really um, high speed, high frequency and, and low power, which is, means it doesn't make the engraving any deeper. It just cleans the blackness out of the engraving. Um, and the key part with this is to make sure it's matching hatch one. So 
other than count and pen number, you want it to be, if it's cross-hatched on hatch one, cross-hatch it on hatch two. Um, and the reason for that is we want the line, we want this to be solid blue. When it doesn't work properly, say if the line spacing is different, um, when you go to zoom in, you can see the blue and yellow lines aren't matched up to each other, which means the cleaning cycle isn't perfectly following the deep engraving, which means the cleaning cycle is not going to work properly. Um, so yeah, that's the key part, making sure that they're matched. When you hatch something, it goes down into this bottom left uh, hand side of the menu here. Um, so once we've lined that back up, we can see the hatch follows exactly. Um, another setting to consider is this all calc. What all calc would do if it's it's not going to change anything on a square like this. So um, if you are engraving text, something like this, um, what all calc will do is it will do it as one wipe. So if all calc is selected, you'll engrave something in full, whereas if it's not selected, it'll engrave one letter at a time. Um, this isn't going to be a big deal um, on something like a name uh, when you're engraving on a flat. It's not, you don't want it selected when you're doing ring engraving. It's only for uh, flat items. Um, but say you are doing a lot of items, like one of our sample sheets, um, it can save a lot of time if you engrave it as all calc as one rather than doing it individually as the the laser can't always the software and the laser won't always recognize the best order to do something in so all calc will eliminate that from from the equation so um, you'll be able to do the whole word at once um, depending on what you're doing it can save you a, a decent amount of time or, or not a lot at all. It, it depends on each item individually. Um, the next part, a uh, couple of parts to consider on here are a couple of little settings. So right now you can see um, there's no line on the outside of this. If you use follow edge once, what it will do, and remembering to match it on both, is it will give you this line here. So it will just add add a line after every count it'll do it'll whip around the outside of the engraving and it'll just add a little bit of definition on onto that engraving some people use it some people don't it's personal preference on it on each item um, you can do that a slightly different way with mark contour as well so if i just take that off you'll see it will it does pretty much the same thing um, so yeah, again, just a way of adding a little bit of detail to the edge of your engraving. Um, now something to consider um, for ring engraving. Um, if you're doing rings and you're doing a continuous ring engraving, there's a, there's a better way of doing it to make sure that you don't get any lines within your engraving. The first thing to do is take off all calc and cross hatch. You don't want those when you're doing ring engraving. Um, what you do want to do is change the angle of the hatch. Um, so right now you can see they go left to right. When you do ring engraving, you actually want them to go up and down because this is the way it will engrave it. So, and remembering again to do it on both the hatch and the cleaning cycle, the, the deep, deep engraving and the cleaning cycle. So. You can see on here now, the lines have changed direction and they're gonna go up and down. This is exactly what you want. Then the last thing you want to change is you want to change it to this hatch type. Um, what that means, there's a few different hatch types. I wouldn't worry too much about all of those. They're, they're not sort of specific applications do specific things. It's more just with, with, the, with the continuous ring engraving where you're engraving a pattern all the way around, something, something like this. Um, you want to see the um, it do just the line, but do nothing when it's going from one to the other. 
uh, one line to the other, basically. That's what that will avoid doing. Whereas something like this engraves all the time while the laser's moving around. And um, so yeah, this is the best hatch type for doing the uh, ring engraving, the continuous ring engraving. For text, it's it's not such a such a massive deal. Um, so that that's the basics of hatch. Um, that's the main things that you need to know. You, there is more information in the guide that comes with the machine um, if you need it, but they're the main things you actually need to know about hatching in terms of the settings. Thank you very much.